All right, hi everyone. Welcome to day three of the Unblock Your Psychic Third Eye Challenge. Today, we're going. Today's topic is called "How to Avoid Being Invaded by Negative Energies," and really, what it's we're going to be talking about today is just about psychic boundaries and psychic protection. But before we get into that, let me just say hi to everyone. How has your day been? How's your energy been? Um, how's the challenge going so far? <laughs> so let me know, just comment real quick. Um, and uh, you know, let me just tell you guys about my day a little bit. I, uh, I had three readings today. Actually, there are three readings slash coaching um, coaching sessions with, with some of my students. And, you know, I, I was busy today because I was also preparing for tonight. And what's interesting is like, as busy as I was, I had to kind of pinch myself like, wow, this is what I get to do each day. How cool is that? <laughs> so I just want to let you guys know, like, I love what I do, right? So I love coming on every night, even though it is busy, like there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff. But this is like the best part of my day, really, when I get to interact with you, when I just get to channel all this great information for you, okay? So anyway, uh, let me just read some comments here. Um, Amy said, energy's been a lot today. Oh yeah, two, today's like 2 22 isn't it? Like there's some stuff going on. <laughs> um, in Zoom, challenge is going great, loving all the information, feeling more centered. All right, Marsha, thanks for sharing that. Um, Amber, higher vibration I felt. Vicky had a sudden energy change at dinner, randomly started feeling like I was coming down with a cold, okay? Yeah, you know, when you're energy sensitive like that, I'm the same thing. I remember like my nephew one time came back from his preschool and all he did was like cough on me a little bit. And I was like, I just got sick. <laughs> I could totally sense it when the moment it happened. Um, Cindy, COVID is kicking my butt. Sorry to hear, Cindy. Um, but you know what's great is you could at least help ground the body, right? Um, Robert, good so far, great day, awesome, all set, okay. Um, Kathy had a dream going off an off ramp that was under construction, meaning came quick, starting a new path, awesome. Love when you get the like these messages, right? Because one thing to get the the picture, but when you also get the message, that's always awesome. All right. Uh, Joseph, Joseph, I'm Joseph also. Um, <laughs> so it says spiritual flu. Joseph says, my feet are killing me for some reason today. Okay. Yeah, you know, whenever something happens in the body, um, part of what I teach is like honor the body, right? So when there's pain in your body, that's your body's way of saying, hey, something's up. And it's trying to give you a message. So often we forget and we forget to pay attention to our own bodies, right? That we forget that that's where all the wisdom is, okay? <laughs> Raleen says, so tired, had to nap. I wish I could have taken a nap earlier, but I was really busy today. Um, VJ is asking, is there a process to connect to spirit? Yes, there is. And, you know, at the end, I'm going to go ahead and do a Q&A at the end. So I'm going to hold off on your question for now. Um, right now, I'm just saying hi to everyone, just giving people time to find the broadcast. I'm buying some time here. Okay, so it looks like we have a um, good number of people on Facebook now. It looks like we have a good number of people on Zoom, which is awesome. All right, so why don't we get started, first of all, with what you learned on day one, which is grounding, okay? So we're going to do kind of an opening meditation here. So I invite everyone, let's get some energy set before we uh, get into the lecture here, okay? Get some energy going. All right, so I encourage everyone now to just kind of sit upright, close your eyes, and you always, always, always want to start with honoring the body before doing any kind of energy work. And the best way to do that is to breathe. All right, so just take a nice, deep cleansing breath. And if you're just joining, we're just doing a little opening meditation here, setting our energy for tonight. And pay attention to your breath for a moment, like you're breathing. How deep is your breath, your inhale? 
How deep is your inhale? And as you exhale, pay attention. How much are you exhaling? Are you exhaling fully? And likewise, when you inhale once again, are you inhaling fully? Really filling in your lungs to its full capacity, bringing in more oxygen, And then when you exhale, you could imagine that you're releasing your day, your week. Yesterday we talked about, or actually we talked about uh, how you could have other people's energies in your space. Or energy not in present time. Or stuck energies. And imagine that as you inhale once again, you bring in more of your life force energy. And then when you exhale, you just breathe out any energy that's not yours, not in present time, any stuck energies that you're ready to release right now. And go to inhale one more time. And this time hold the breath for a few seconds, just allow for the oxygen to permeate into your body. And then just give a nice, easy exhale once again. And when it comes to honoring the body, what a great way to be present and to simply just breathe. Now, when the body's a little bit more relaxed than just moments ago, that's a good sign that you're ready to do some energy work. Now, for some of you, you might've had a really tough day, so you might wanna just continue with the breathing. You just want the body to be nice and relaxed. And so go ahead and now, Imagine a nice green ball of energy right at the base of your spine. And, you know, we've been playing with green actually for the last couple of days. What, you could also play with a blue or purple ball of energy, just a color of your choice now. And if green still calls to you, you could still play with green. It's green's easy to imagine because you could imagine the green grass or if you are playing with blue, you could imagine an ocean blue. No matter what color you're playing with today, imagine now that you could just drop this ball of energy all the way down, 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 down to the center of the planet, leaving behind a tube of energy, whether it's green, blue, purple, And make sure it's as wide as your hips or maybe a little bit wider, just so you can get the sense of being nice and grounded and connected to the center of the planet. And just like the roots of a tree or maybe an anchor of a ship, when you're nice and connected to mother earth, then the body can begin to feel safe, secure, grounded. And then as you just give a silent acknowledgement or a hello, you could just say, give a silent hello to yourself. Begin to notice the energy that is yours or not yours. And if it is your energy, it feels good. And normally if it's not your energy, then it might come across as a pain, a dull ache, an itch, an irritation. It could even be a recurring thought. It could be an energy not in present time from the past 
or maybe some future you're stuck on, some possible future. Or it could just be some stuck energy. And when you identify those places on your body or even in your aura, your energy field around you where you might have some of this foreign energy in your space, Imagine now that those have some weight to them, that gravity can take hold of those. And when they get weight, they might show up as like maybe little pebbles or sludge or maybe like dirty water, a sink full of dirty water. And when you pull the plug on that sink, it all just begins to drain away from your body, your mind, your soul, your aura. every single cell of your body starts to clear. And as you're releasing and letting go, you might start to feel lighter and lighter as a result. The more that you release, kind of like a weight being lifted off your shoulders. And as you get more and more clear, centered, having more room for you. Then go ahead and start to validate the clearing all in oh, about seven minutes here. that simply by paying attention to your energy and therefore increasing your energy awareness each time you ground and work with this meditation tool here, this grounding tool, that the more you do this, the more your energy awareness increases. It gets better day by day, definitely better than yesterday. Now, you never want to just leave your space empty. Otherwise, any old thing could come in. And, you know, today we're going to be talking about psychic boundaries. And so rather than letting anything in, go ahead and now create a gold sun up above your head, about three feet up. And have it be about three feet tall, three feet wide. And imagine that. The gravitational pull of this gold sun just calls all your energy back. And for good measure, you could write your name in magnetic ink in the middle of the gold sun just to specifically tune it to your vibration, the energy that's unique to you and only you in the whole entire universe. And as more and more of your energy comes back from all the places where you might have left your energy whether known or unknown, past or in the future, some this lifetime, some other lifetime, or even from some other dimensional reality. Just call your energy back, watching the gold sun as it gets larger and larger, as more and more of your energy comes back. And when that gold sun's all nice and full, Go ahead and now have the golden energy, the light of your own energy pour in through the top of your head, down into your body, into your cells, your chakras, your energy channels, and even your aura, your energy field, picture it as a bubble around you so that you're surrounded by the golden light of your own energy in front of you, behind you, above and below to the left of you, to the right of you, just really all around. And go ahead and breathe in that golden light of your own life force there. And when you're all filled up, you could open your eyes, go ahead and stretch out a little bit. 
and stretching out helps to validate the body and remember you know that you have a body because when you're in trance it's easy to lose track and welcome back all right so how was that just go ahead and comment and if you happen to just join we just did some grounding so you could always ground on your own you could keep up or catch up and I'd love to get some comments. How was that? Was that relaxing for you? Was that, did you release a lot? Or maybe even what did you notice that you released? All right, so I see the comments coming in. Mom Vijay says, very relaxing, very peaceful and enjoyable. Awesome. Okay, and I know on Facebook, it takes like about 10, 15 seconds before those comments come in. Um, Bridget says that was relaxing, much needed, calming. Uh, Marcia says very relaxing, release some fear from past experiences. Awesome. All right, now the comments are really rolling in. Um, let's see. Oh, Stacy, great. Um, a lot better than the other two times, loving it. Yeah, like I said, the more you do this, the easier it gets, right? And this is what I was pointing out like on day one. We want to try to make it perfect the first time, but that's not what this is all about, right? It's more about being in the practice of it. That's when the true mastery comes in from the practice, okay? Um, Carmen, I like the gold sun exercise, different from other techniques I use. Awesome, great. Glad you enjoyed that. Um, working on how to release and not take it back, right? Well, that's what we're going to cover on, on psychic protection here. Um, Heather, my back has been really sore tonight. It's been less, and, less than it's been. Great validation, okay? Um, calming, relaxing. Um, Joseph, I released a lot of tension. I've built up in life. Awesome. <laughs> it's always good. Great validation there. And then Angie, sometimes visuals resonate. Sometimes they don't. Thanks for sharing, Angie, because we're actually going to talk about that tonight. Um, and William says, I'm stuck to the earth. All right. Um, the visuals help me with, help me focus my energy. Okay. Awesome. So thanks for sharing, you guys, right? And keep the comments coming because that may, lets me know that what I'm talking about is clear to you. And um, yeah, it, just great to have the feedback. And then you could all learn from each other as well. We could all learn from each other, okay? All right, well, as usual, like I've been covering each night, um, before I actually get to the topic, right? I like to dispel certain misconceptions, right? Um, that's out there in, in our community or out in the world or just out there that, that people tend to believe, right? Especially about their psychic gifts. Um, but when you really look at it, only come to find out like, oh yeah, that's not even true, right? And so yesterday we talked about, for example, like when you try harder to open up your gifts, that's actually a detriment to trying to open up, okay? So let's get into this here. Okay. One thing that I want to bring up with you guys is that when it comes to learning anything new, okay, and one thing that comes up is that you're, 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 it's like you're not learning anything new, right? And if I'm not getting it right away, then there must be something wrong, okay? So how many of you encountered that, right? When I'm learning anything new, if I'm not getting it right away, then there must be something wrong. Now, many of you have encountered this, right? I don't see anything. I have a hard time visualizing. Right. How many of you have said that to yourself? Like, oh, I don't get it. <laughs> right. Especially when it comes to accessing your psychic third eye. Right. So I'm getting a lot of yep, yes. Okay. Now, this is the number one misconception that most students have the hardest time overcoming. And I'm going to talk about why that is in just a moment. Now, when sitting there trying to tap into your psychic third eye, right? You're sitting there, but because you're convinced that you're not seeing anything, right? 
it's one thing to say I can't see anything, but it's another ball game to say I'm convinced I see nothing. Do you see how that's a different energy? Do you sense how that's a different energy? On one hand, it's like, I, I don't know that I see anything, right? So that's kind of like you're still giving it a chance. But then you come across people who are like, eh, I don't see anything, right? So how many times have you encountered that for yourself? Like it didn't work the very first time, so something must be wrong, <laughs> okay? So now, here's the a, here's a thing. When you, begin to, when you begin to get convinced, right? Whether it's true or not, it's, it's just the act of saying something to yourself over and over and over again. The question is, just because you say it to yourself over and over and over again, does it make that thing true? Okay, I'm gonna say that again. Just because you say something over and over and over again to yourself, does it make it true? Okay, so for example, if you say to yourself, I don't see any colors when I look through my third eye, right? And maybe you didn't even give yourself a chance to get around to seeing colors, but do you get that the more that you say that to yourself, then over time, of course, you're not going to see the colors or see pictures or images in your mind's eye or your third eye. Is this making sense so far? Give me some feedback. Like what ends up happening is that the more that you say these things to yourself, then it becomes like its own hypnosis, right? It becomes its own self-hypnosis. Okay. And Bridget's saying, yeah, but we start to believe it the more we say it to ourselves. Okay. And then um, just the comments are coming in real quick. Yeah. And then it goes to the subconscious, says Nat, self doubt, talk downs of self, says Amber. Monique says strange but true. Marcia says makes sense. Okay. So now, you know, when it comes to your own experience so far in this challenge, right? Here I am saying to you or sharing with you, um, go ahead and take a look at your grounding cord, right? And, you know, go ahead and comment away, right? It's okay. How many of you still have a hard time? It's day three. You're, you haven't really got a sense of a, a good sense of what your grounding cord looks like even, or even what your gold sun looks like. How many of you are having trouble seeing those seeing those. And even when I talked about like the three hidden energies, right? The not your energy, not in present time, your stuck energies, right? How many of you are having a hard time seeing those, seeing that? Okay. So Cindy says me, all right. Bridget says me. Okay. All right. So consider, here's what I want you to consider. Okay. Uh, and Amber says, uh, Joseph says me also. Um, Amber, the sun definitely hard time seeing it expand. Okay, it's easier when I'm outside, says Marsha. Um, VJ says, I can't see stuck energy, but I feel pain in parts of my body. Um, that says, all good. Okay, so some of you are more visual than others, right? Um, Vicky, not sure. Okay, so that's also a valid, valid um, point of view there. Now, what I want, and this is kind of, it's hard to put words to this sometimes, right? So, what I want y'all to consider is that when you say something to yourself over and over again, it's important to distinguish, like, is it really true? Because sometimes it can be really true. Or is it true only because of you saying it over and over to yourself a thousand times, right? Throughout your whole lifetime. And then you become becomes a hypnosis. Okay. So if you start saying to yourself, well, I can't see any, see any energy, right? And then you say it enough times, then it will become true, right? Even though it's not true, it becomes true for you, right? Because you validated over and over again, like, oh, I can't see. All right. And Jacqueline, yes, it becomes programmed in exactly, even if it's not true. Okay. Now consider for a moment, right? And this is kind of more conceptual, but now let's get more real here. 
consider for a moment how many times you have been hypnotized and didn't even know it. How many of you have heard the saying, money doesn't grow on trees? Right? I personally didn't grow up with that, but I've had many students who are, who are like, they heard that 10,000 times from their parents, like, oh, money doesn't grow on trees. And then they grow up and they don't have that like abundance mindset as a result, right? And yes, um, uh, who said that? Uh, Amber, words are so important, how we use them, okay? And then yet another um, thing that we covered yesterday was you have to work harder in order to succeed, right? That's yet another program. But in some instances, working harder is actually more of a detriment right? What if you could make things easy so you don't have to work so hard and yet still have all the abundance in the world that you want, okay? And then what we learned yesterday was that working harder at your gifts actually sets you back in the energy world because when you get the 333s, 1111s, or the premonitions or dreams, you're not working hard, are you? Okay? Now, Michelle says, I grew up hearing that. Catherine says, yes, hypnosis ingrained. Okay, you know, I, I'm so glad that, um, like I love talking to the energy crowd, right? Because y'all are getting it. Like if I was talking to the non-energy crowd, they, they'll be looking at me like, what the hell is this guy talking about? He's Is he loony or something, <laughs> right? Um, but y'all are getting it. So I'm glad that y'all are following along. Okay, now, I can totally understand, right? If you maybe were or weren't aware of this hypnosis energy, but now that it's being pointed out to you, right? It's so prevalent how, how this hypnosis energy is like everywhere, isn't it? Like even your own self-talk, that's a form of self-hypnosis, especially when you say to yourself the same things over and over again. It's like, uh, I'll never lose weight or, oh, I'll, I'll never be successful, right? Like those are ways of self-hypnosis. Now, I wanna introduce to you something that's even bigger at play. And I promise I'll get, I'll tie this all into like psychic boundaries here, right? Um, in just a moment. But there's something greater going on that I wanna let you know that um, you may not, you may may not know or realize that this is happening, but when you get this, you'll be like, oh, wow that there's something greater at play. And you might be relieved to learn this when you do realize it, that for many of you, if you are having a hard time seeing through your psychic third eye, that because of this hypnosis energy that's going on, your inability at the moment, right? I'm just gonna say at the moment, because it's not a permanent thing, but your inability to see through your third eye is actually not completely your fault. And here's why, okay? Here's why it's not your fault. On this planet, right? I'm talking about planet Earth because <laughs> I know in my groups, um, I have a lot of star seeds here. Um, but on this planet, there's actually not a lot of permission to see energy. Okay, let me say that again. On this planet, there's not a lot of permission to see energy. And on top of that, there's actually not a lot of permission in general for the psychic experience or um, su the supernatural, right? Supernatural phenomenon. Um, case in point, if you even talked about ghosts, right? And people are like, oh, ghosts, what are you talking about? Like, that's the devil's work, <laughs> right? Or, or you see an orb out of the corner of your eye. How many of you see orbs, right? And you're like, and you look over there, you don't see anything like, oh, that's coincidence. But then when you share that with your friend who, who doesn't believe in all this stuff, they'll, they'll just look at you like, you need to get your eyes checked, <laughs> right? And don't get me started on, on like UFOs and aliens and stuff like that. And, and, you know, when people start talking about that and, you know, the response you'll get is like, oh, you're, you're just not right in the head. Or, oh, I saw that spirit guide. Oh, no, that's crazy. You're crazy. So how many of you have encountered like some flavor of that in your own life? Just go ahead and comment, right? So Bridget's like, been there. Stacy's me. Carmen, yes. Okay. Um, 
Laurie, yes. Okay, so a lot of you have been there, done that. Yep, Cindy says, yep. Raleen, absolutely. Okay, so it's almost like I'm preaching to the choir a little bit here, right? Jessica says every day. Um, the Facebook coming, comments are coming in now. Yes, a lot. Um, Shauna, yes. David, for sure. <laughs> um, Catherine, Molly, um, yes, and animals see them as well. So true. Um, I see Orb, yes, indeed. Melissa says yes. Okay. Uh, Leonor says, story of my life. <laughs> okay. So in everyday life, it's all around us, right? Whether we realize it or not, that there's this messaging that we get over and over and over again, like that's not normal. You're not normal. You're not allowed to be talking about all that. Okay. The truth is though, you guys, right? Just about everyone has said at one point or another, like, oh, I just thought of you. It's funny how you just called, right? now. To us, we would say, oh yeah, there's something psychic about that or intuitive, right? Or magical even. But to an outsider, they're like, they, they pass it off as coincidence. Now, just as another case in point, okay? And um, this one is more personal to me because like say when one of your loved ones just passed away and I, I actually had an aunt who recently passed away, okay? And when people say like, oh, she's near, she's near to you, right? She's still watching over you. And people say that to comfort you, right? And, you know, it's very kind of them, of course. But when people really get questioned, like, well, how does all that work? How, how do you know she's really near? How do you really know she's watching over you? And if you were to reply, oh, well, it's because of my sixth sense, right? It's because of my intuition, my psychic gift. That's how I know she's near. And then the response you'll get is like, are you crazy? <laughs> but then they literally just said to you, like, your aunt is near. She's watching over you. But when you say how you know that, then you get the crazy look, right? Like you look, the cray cray look. <laughs> okay, so how many of you could relate to that, right? You've heard like the, the atheists or, or the people that don't believe in energy, for example, and, and nothing wrong with atheists, right? I'm not trying to pick on them. I'm just, that's just the word that came out. Um, but yeah, right? So is it or is it not true? Okay. And then imagine being told like, oh, your aunt is nearby. Oh, how do you know? Well, because I'm psychic. Only to be told, oh, but that's the devil's work. Well, no, my aunt's not a devil. <laughs> right do you, get, do you get how like it's it's crazy like there's we call it a dichotomy where like is it true or is it not true it can't be both at the same time right so here's my point you guys okay here's my point and this is really what i want y'all to get on one hand there's so much so many people they're like oh yeah i get i have these psychic experiences i think of someone and Five minutes later, they, they call me or, or I get the three, three, threes and I get these messages. I get the validation or, you know, I get the, the spiritual hello from my aunt who just passed away. There's that. But then on the other side, there's the hypnosis that says, but this is not real. So here on this camp, it's real. But hey, you know, it's really not real. <laughs> have, have you guys ever looked at it and, and seen it in that way? Now, just digging a little bit deeper, right? When literally thousands and millions of people are all having these common experiences, and yet the response is, well, no, that's not really real. Do y'all, are y'all starting to get how strong this hypnosis is on the planet? to say like, oh yeah, everyone's getting this, but oh no, it's not really real. How's that for a hypnosis? Okay, how's that for hypnosis? <laughs> now, and Vicky said, wow, never really thought about it, right? So no wonder why it's so hard to develop your gifts, right? Especially when you're in the face of the, not, not only the weight of the hypnosis, but Imagine that it's on a planetary level, you guys. Like, this is planetary level stuff. So imagine working against the grain, right? Of trying to wake, wake up your gifts. 
Now, one more thing, one more point I want to make about this. Um, I'm not a conspiracy theorist in any way, shape, or form, right? And if you are into conspiracy theories, all good. You know, um, I'm not criticizing you at all, but I do question though, right? You got to wonder what if everyone were able to tap into to their gifts, then what? Right? Well, consider that tapping into your gifts means that you would be able to see some kind of higher truth, right? And someone asked the question, like, um, like the game of it all, the energy game of it all. Well, when you could see the game that's going on, that's playing out in the universe, then it's like you're seeing the real truth of it all. And seeing, sensing, being in contact with your truth right? If people, people really knew their own truths, then what would be the outcome of that, right? If people really knew their deeper truths, then guess what? When you know what's true, then you can't be controlled anymore, okay? Let me say that again. When, you, when people are in contact with their own truths, right? It's like, no, I already know that's true. Then people don't have, no one else can have control over you anymore, So it's easier and more convenient to say, oh, that's scary. Oh, that's the devil's work. When the truth is being psychic is actually a gift, okay? And for me, spirit is more real than any of that out there, right? It's more real than the news, the made up, made up, made up stuff that you see on the media, right? For me, that's all more entertainment than anything, okay? So Cindy's saying, wow, Jessica's saying, if we, if we all knew the truth, right? Um, yeah, Jessica is like, is dangerous to the government, right? So again, I'm not like trying to peddle any conspiracy theories. I'm just more like on the energy side of it all, right? Sounds like, yeah, it's amazing that we live on a giant rock that revolves around a huge ball of fire and we could flick a switch, turns out, in a light, but people don't believe in unseen energy. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then on Facebook, okay, a lot of great comments here. Um, yeah, I, I agree, Jacqueline, it's time to wake up. Time to wake up, right? So anyway, um, I don't wanna get off to, on too far of a tangent here. Um, so we made the case for how strong the hypnosis is. I think y'all can agree now, right? How strong this hypno hypnotic energy is of, of how there's no permission to be psychic or that energy like this is real, right? And not just for us individually, but there's also like a planetary, like a group level agreement for this to not be real, right? It's easier to say, oh, that's crazy talk or, or like spirit's not real or, or the psychic stuff is not real. So the next question becomes, how do we get over the hypnosis of the planet, right? So that you can be more in touch with your gifts. So that in turn, like the goal is to be able to see through your psychic third eye, right? So that you can begin to see energy better so that you don't have to be saying stuff like, oh, I don't see energy, right? I don't see anything. Oh, my third eye is not working, right? But can you guys see though? Can you guys sense, feel? that you got to watch out for your own self-hypnosis, okay? So rather than, and here's what I want to invite you all to do, right? Rather than saying like, I don't see anything, right? Oh, it's not working. What if you were to just say to yourself for now, just say stuff like, oh, I don't see anything for now. Or I see a little bit. I might not be sure yet, but I think I see something, but let me... Let me keep playing with this. Let me keep, let me keep exploring, right? Do you see how that's different from like, eh, I tried it one time, it didn't work, uh, this, this is not working, right? And then you say that to yourself 20 more times, then of course it's gonna be true. But the fact of the matter is you've already sold yourself short before really giving it a chance. And this is not just with your gifts, you guys. This is about life, isn't it? Okay. Sally's like, yeah, this is why I shut off cable when my kids were very young. Hidden hypnosis. So true, right? 
Okay, so is this all resonating with you, right? Here I am. Yes, I'd love to teach you how to awaken your psychic third eye, but if we can't get over this hypnosis piece first, then trying to access and tap into your third eye would almost be impossible, wouldn't it? All right. So anyway, Vicky says, yep, very much. Amy says, so true. Okay. Um, Monique resonates for sure on a level I get. Awesome. Jackie says, yes, very much so. <laughs> Monique says, I'm taking notes. Okay, awesome. All right. And this is all recorded, you guys, too. But yeah, take notes. If something really resonates with you, like jot it down, because that's that's a sign of like something that's already true for you. Okay. Now, uh, let me catch up on my bullet points here. Okay. So with all this said, right, now that you have this understood, <laughs> all of you like taking notes. So I didn't realize y'all were taking notes. That's awesome. Um, with all this said, right, where do psychic boundaries come into play? Okay. Well, I want you to all get this picture. We're shifting gears a little bit from the whole hypnosis thing. Well, kind of, right? Imagine that we're going we're gonna to be playing with your aura a little bit today. Okay, so your aura, imagine that your aura is just like a bubble of your own energy around you. Okay, and, and if you can't see auras yet, right, remember to use the word yet, that's okay. The visual, though, is imagine that your aura, right, and imagine it's like a bubble around you. The edge of your aura is your psychic boundaries. Okay, so imagine that when it comes to all that hypnosis energy, what if all that hypnosis energy were to stay outside of your aura, outside of your bubble, and then whatever's going on inside of your bubble, that's your world, that's your universe, that's your body, that's your temple. And whatever is going on inside your bubble, right? It's your world, your universe. And what if you were to have the attitude that whatever is going on inside your bubble, that's all you need to be responsible for. Now, everything else going on outside your bubble, all that hypnosis, other people's energies, other people's stuck thoughts, other people's beliefs, like who cares, right? All that stuff doesn't matter. What if you could just keep that all outside of your bubble? Right, Amber said, OMG, love, I love this, I feel it. <laughs> Michelle said, fantastic, I just cleared mine. All right, Kelly, wonderful to have all the other energy and just bounce away. Vicky says, awesome. Now, just to develop that picture even further, what if now that you could keep your, you know, keep all that energy out inside your bubble, wouldn't you say that now you have a greater chance, now that you have all this other foreign energy outside your space and it's kept out, wouldn't you have a greater chance of now having clearer pictures for you to see out your third eye, right? Wouldn't it be more possible when you don't have all this foreign energy, energy not yours, not in present time, stuck energies, when you could release and let that go out and let it go from your bubble, from your aura, You know, um, a lot of people want to grow, get better, right? Let me get more information. But it's kind of like when, you know, like a wardrobe, right? Like say you want to bring in this. I'm not a, I'm not a fashion person at all. But maybe, so maybe this is a bad analogy. But let's say like you want to bring in some new clothes, right? Like this season's new fashion, but your closet is full from last season, all right? And here you are, you want to bring in new stuff, but you literally have no room for it. That's how a lot of people are walking around, you guys. And you know, let me know if you can relate to this. Like, you just got too much stuff in your space. You haven't released it. You haven't let it go. And then only come to find out a lot of the stuff that's in your space, in your bubble, Right? It's not even yours to begin with. It's like this hypnosis energy. Right? It doesn't even serve you. It doesn't serve your higher purpose. Okay? <laughs> so 
Um, Vicky says, awesome. You make it so plain. Um, absolutely, for sure. Me, I need to go sing Frozen and let it go. <laughs> Ember says, I love your analogy. It does not belong. Um, I don't know why I'm holding on to this stuff, right? Like, why? Why are we holding on to this stuff, especially if it doesn't serve us? Okay, and then on Facebook, uh, Justin says, I always bubble up even when I go in public. Awesome, okay? Yeah, I do, I do too. Um, Bridget says, out with the old and in with the new, okay? And Kathy, I used to walk around work saying I'm creating my own bubble. LOL, retired now, yay. <laughs> and then that says, um, big transformations when you let go. Absolutely, okay? So anyway, uh, let me get back to my bullet points here. All right, so with that said, right, when you can have a clear bubble, how much more possible would it be to be more in tune with your own natural abilities, right? How, how, what can you do with all the higher truths that you can begin to access when you get beyond like this group agreement, this group agreement hypnosis that's on this planet, right? And again, I really want to just cement the point that just because millions and millions and millions of people agree like, oh, this psychic stuff is not real, does that make it true? Like, no. Okay. So. And I totally went off on a tangent. I don't know where I left off. <laughs> But let me know, you guys, are you guys getting the point here? Are you guys getting the point of, of what I'm trying to say, okay? That if you really want to be good at anything, if you really want to develop your gift, if you really want to open up your psychic third eye, one, watch your self-talk, right? That you can control. And two, realize that, yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there that we thought was true only to come to find out that it's just this group agreement hypnosis that wasn't true to begin with, okay? So the next time you catch yourself saying, oh, I can't see very clearly, I don't see anything, right? Plus all that hypnosis, that's, that's what you guys can control, okay? you actually are empowered in that sense because you could control your thoughts in that way, all right? And then guess what? When you could get beyond the hypnosis, when you could get beyond just like the self-talk and begin to say like, you know, I do see a little bit or I'm beginning to see, it's not the clearest yet, then you have a greater chance, okay? You have a much greater chance at awakening your psychic third eye and then getting in tap in touch with and tapping into your gifts in general okay so is all that making sense and yeah by the way um go ahead and type in day, hashtag day three done before we forget thanks for the reminder amy says stop letting the bad hypnosis control me <laughs> that'll be saying yes yes okay all right, um, let me see if there's anything else I need to cover before we move on here. Okay, so what I wanna share with you now is just the introduction to your aura, okay? So let me ask you, how many of you see auras? Just go ahead and type in the word aura if you see auras. And if you don't, that's okay. Or just say, I don't see it, see them yet. <laughs> just say, type in not yet <laughs> if you don't see aura. Um, I, get, I get not yet, a little, okay. Not yet. I'm glad, I'm glad you're all being coachable here. I don't see them yet. <laughs> Love that. Um, Melissa, sometimes. Okay. Jervy, not yet. Okay, great, great. Well, let's just talk about what the aura is because maybe you don't have a, a, a clear sense yet of what exactly the aura is. Your aura is simply your energy field around you, okay? And you know your aura is real because if you've ever been in line at a grocery store, right? You're in line at the, in line at the grocery store and someone behind you is standing way too close, right? And you don't even have to turn around and to look and see. 
you you just know like oh my god that person is in my space right how many of you could relate to that right people being in your space and you don't have to even look around okay jacqueline says yep Merlene, yep yep yes yes okay so that space all right when people get in your space that space is your aura Okay, so maybe you haven't related, related to it in that way, but that space is actually your aura. That's your auric field. That's your energy field. There's all these different names for it or ways to describe it, but that's your energy field, okay? So a lot of people question, like, is the aura even real? Well, yeah, it's real because when someone is in your space, you're like, oh, get out of my space. That's how you know it's real. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Um, and Kelly's like, oh, I hate that. I want to say, please ex exit my personal bubble. <laughs> Sally's like, it's uncomfortable. Vicky, it's uncomfortable just talking about it. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Yes. And Michelle, all sizes. Okay. Yes, exactly. And yep, a lot of you are, are starting to get it. Right. This whole notion of auras. Okay. So we're not going to work on this now. Right. But what I teach you in the eight week training program that's coming up, right? The, the third eye awakening program, the third eye mastery program. What I'm gonna teach you is exactly how to work with your aura. So not only do you have like a sense of psychic boundaries, right? And you know, you already got kind of the, 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 the picture there of the bubble. So not only with psychic boundaries, but once you have your boundaries, then learning really quick and easy ways to protect, right? So now that you know what to protect, then the actual psychic protection piece of it all is actually the easy part, all right? One second, my dog is like, oh. Oh, yeah. All right, so. And again, you know, you could already start playing with that picture, right? Of like my bubble is my world, okay? My my body, my temple, like that kind of kind of thing. And then just have that attitude, right? This is something you could work on now, right? Just have that attitude that whatever is on the outside of my bubble, that's not my responsibility, right? It's like that's the rest of the world. Let the rest of the world take care of itself. I have enough going on inside my own bubble. <laughs> okay. All right. So let me know if this makes sense to you, at least the concept of it all. Um, you, don't, you might not have the tools yet, but some of you have already been playing with it like naturally, right? It's like, oh, I totally just grounded my bubble. I already released all that stuff out of my bubble. Okay. So y'all are saying, I get it. Makes sense. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Y'all are saying hi to... Um, my, uh, my dog, my dog, Layla. Uh, yeah, she wanted to get out of this bubble. She's like, let me out of here. <laughs> Monique, all good. All good, Monique. All right, so Jervy says yes, Bridget, yes. Okay, fulfilling says Monique. Okay, awesome. All right, well, uh, let me see if there's any last thing that I missed. And let me just scroll through people's comments real quick. And then we'll get to a Q&A here in just a second. Okay. Well, guess what? I'm actually done five minutes earlier than usual. <laughs> Usually, like I, I get off, I get I get on get on a tangent, and I have to catch myself. I got to finish on time. Finish on time. Um, but it looks like I got finished five minutes earlier than usual. All right. So. Just to sum up today, right? One, watch your self-talk because when you repeat anything enough times to yourself, including stuff like, oh, I don't see energy or my third eye is not working, that becomes a hypnosis, okay? Now that level of hypnosis, you can control, right? You don't have to, you could stop literally with the, the negative self-talk starting now, starting today. That's number one. Number two is, yes, there's a hypnosis thing going on the planet. There's a group agreement on a planetary level that 
oh, the psychic stuff is not real. It's the devil's work, or you're not allowed to go there. Okay. But realize that that's just a group agreement. That's just happens to be a millions of people saying the same thing over and over again. And then it becomes a group hypnosis. Well, all that's not true either. And then the number three last point of today is that when you could get beyond the hypnosis, right? And then you start to establish your own psychic boundaries and realize like all that energy is out there. I'm going to worry about my own bubble. I'm going to keep my own space clean, clear. Then you have a greater, a much greater chance of then activating your psychic third eye. Okay. So is that all, is all that making sense? Does all, all that sound good? Just type in, sounds good. If, if, if y'all are getting that. Okay, it sounds good, says Robert. Raleen says, thank you, Vicky. Sounds good. Okay, great. Now, tomorrow, tomorrow, day four of the challenge. Can you believe it's already day four? I'm like, whoa. It's <laughs> um, tomorrow, we're going to talk about overcoming the biggest misconception when it comes to activating and using your psychic third eye. Okay. So definitely stay tuned for that. Um, tomorrow's like probably the day you've been waiting for. It's like, we've been talking about everything else, Joe, but what about the third eye finally? Well, everything we've been talking about so far has been leading up to that. You, you had to understand all this before we started really talking about the third eye. Does that make sense? So tomorrow, definitely, you know, um, set your calendars, right? It's 2.22.22 today, um, tomorrow. Um, we're going to be going live again, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And we're actually going to be talking about the psychic third eye. And definitely come, come by tomorrow because three lucky people will get a psychic reading because I'm going to demonstrate a, a clairvoyant third eye reading for three lucky people, okay? And even if you don't get a reading tomorrow, um, you could try practicing with me to see what happens, right? And you may or may not get something, but... The idea of tomorrow's, it's going to be fun. It's going to literally be third eye opening, right? If I could use that pun. Um, and so, yeah, um, it'll be fun. Okay. Um, so 6 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Mountain, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern. Okay. Um, it's so funny. Like, I, I, I'm really good at math, you guys, right? But um when I get into my channeling mode, my psychic mode, like the logical thinking part of me just goes right out the window, right? I'm just so present that logic, like, so here I was trying to calculate the times. I'm like, oh my God, I have to like, think about it extra hard. <laughs> All right, but that's the nature of, of this work. When you're really in the zone, like you don't, you're not thinking about later. You're not thinking about the past. You're literally in the present now, okay? Well, that's today's lecture. So if you have to go, um, feel free to go, right? But for those of you that you want, you have questions, you want clarification on stuff, um, I'll stick around for about 20, 30 minutes here. And I'm happy to answer any of your questions about your psychic awakening, um, anything you wanted to know. And while you have me live, ask away, okay? But for those of you that do have to go, it was great having you here. Thanks for being here. I know some of you, like it's late on the East Coast. So I know it's bedtime for you. Uh, so thank you for being here, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, otherwise, let me take a look at some questions here. Okay. All right. Thank you for the feedback. I love you. Thank you. It was a great night. Thank you. You guys are welcome. Okay. So uh, the first question that's coming across my feed here, what is the process to connect to higher self? Yeah, you know, Vijay, that's a great question. How do I answer this? Because that's such a layered question, right? And some of those that doesn't quite have the most simple answer. Um, let me just talk about the avenue in which to connect to your higher self. And that is when you can recognize yourself as a spirit beyond just being a body. Okay. Because I believe that we're all spirit in a body and the body is just our vehicle. When you could get in touch with the energy side of who you are as a soul, as a spirit, then you start to realize that you as a spirit, you could be, you could reach the edge of the universe if you really wanted to, right? You could get in touch with your spirit guide. You could get in touch with source. 
let alone when you really get in contact with who you are as a spirit, acknowledge who you are, the energy of who you are, then you realize that who you are as your higher self is no different from who you are as your, your soul, okay? Now, the higher self is, has its own nuance, right? Because it's that part of you that sees all, that already knows your, your spiritual path. That's kind of like your guide. As time unfolds, the higher self exists outside space and time, reality. Right, so guess who you are as a, as a spirit? Spirit also exists outside space, time, reality, and as well, it navigates through space and time, reality as well, okay? So part of the process to connecting to your higher self, and it's such a great question, is connect with who you are as a spirit, the spirit yourself, okay? One second. All right, of course, Layla wants to say hi to everyone. Hi, if you guys haven't seen Layla or met Layla yet, she's the one that she likes to walk in and out. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just gonna put her down for a moment. Okay, uh, so let me go to Facebook here. Um, Amy says, I tried your grounding technique today before and after a reading and it made a big difference. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Glad that helped, Amy. And you know, you learned it all in this in the span of what, two, three days here, right? And it's already making a difference. That's what I love about these tools that you're gonna learn when you sign up for the eight week program is that they're easy. They're not difficult, right? Um, so Amy, thank you for the feedback there. Uh, Michelle, I had a good question at beginning club. I don't remember, okay. Um, when you do remember, Michelle, go ahead and type that in. Um, can kids see spirit? Uh, Bridget is asking, can kids see spirit easier than we can? Because my sister passed a few years ago, and my little boy tells me he sees her from time to time. Yes, the answer to that question is yes. Um, kids are so open anyway, because they don't have all the hypnosis that we talked about, right? They haven't had that opportunity to... to um, face the weight of this planetary hypnosis that we talked about, okay? So when kids are get older, of course, let, you know, they, they start, you know, kids in general, their, their psychic channels are more open anyway. Um, so yeah, they don't have, they don't face a lot of stuff that we as adults do, right? So yeah, for sure. Kids are definitely much more um, psychic than many adults are. Um, Stacy said, thanks, you. thanks so much, Joe. Once again, amazing. Can't wait for it tomorrow. All right, thank you for the feedback. Uh, okay, one second. I have three windows open here. Um, okay, so the question, I'm pretty open, but how do I let go of some of my old negative energies? Yeah, you know what? The grounding technique that you just that we covered the last couple of days, that's exactly it. I'm going to teach you some more advanced tools when you sign up for the eight week program or if you sign up, right? But for those who do sign up, that's I'm going to teach you even more techniques to release and let go of energies. However, grounding is awesome, right? So the, the technique of like scan your space, scan your aura, scan for any stuck or heavy energies or irritations or headaches, right? All of those are signs that you have some foreign energy in your space. And when you ground those away and when you release and let those go, right? It's the grounding technique. That's what, definitely what's gonna help you, okay? Um, let's see. Michelle, I thought you'd just call on and ask for higher self to come and help. Yeah, absolutely, right? And after a while, you realize that it's all just energy, right? That's part of the game, okay? And same goes for angels. You know, a lot of the consistent messages I get from the angelic realm is ask and you shall receive, but people aren't asking. That's why they're not receiving. And when you do get in contact with angels, right? It's, you just talk telepathically to them. Okay, people want to make it more than it is, but what if what if it's just you telepathically speaking with them? 
And of course, there's all that hypnosis, like what, what we talked about today of like, oh, there's, it's impossible to talk to angels or who am I to, to talk to angels or my higher self, that kind of stuff, right? Those are things that you could release and let go of. Okay. Um, so let's see, Jacqueline, I feel like when people ask me what I do that I get tongue twisted because the self-limiting beliefs are almost screaming for me to stop discussing it. For others maybe experiencing this, do you have any advice on strengthening the volume of our intuitive voices? So great question, Jacqueline. And here's what I really want to impress upon you and all of you who have similar questions. Just like what we covered yesterday with the dirty window, right? It's less about straining harder to see through a dirty window. It's more like, what if you could just clear all that stuff off the dirty window and then you don't have to try so hard. Likewise, Jacqueline, right? When it comes to these limiting beliefs, rather than strengthening your voice, your intuitive voice more, what if you were to get a healing and release some of these limiting beliefs that are blocking you from really being in your full power, right? And then, you know, one thing I noticed, and this may or may not apply to you, Jacqueline, but when it comes to light warriors in general, light workers, and I, I like to use light warriors because there's a lot of forces that don't want you to shine your light. What I find a lot of people doing out in today's world is that rather than shining their light and being really who they are, you know, in order to make other people comfortable, what we end up doing is we dim our light. My advice is don't dim your light just to make other people comfortable. What if you were to just shine your light even brighter? Right? Be really in your in, in the glory of your own light there. And then the people who get it, those are the people who are meant to be around you. Those are the people you're meant to attract. And then the ones who want you to dim your light or who don't get it, right? Well, maybe they aren't meant to really be in your life. Or at least not maybe fully. Okay. I mean, everyone right? There's a purpose for everyone in your life. And there's a reason why people pop into your life. So I'm not saying discount them. But what I am saying is don't dim your light, right? If anything, shine brighter. Okay. So when you're just shining brightly already, do you really need to talk louder? Right? Do you really need to strengthen your voice? It's like, no, I'm just really being my authentic light. This is just who I am. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, let me go back. I have, like I said, I have three windows open here. Um, I'm able to read people within seconds of being around them. I do readings and I feel what other people feel. How do I open up, open myself to more? Like, how do I not second guess myself with what spirit is saying to me? Yeah, great question. Okay. Um, first of all, it takes practice, right? That when you do start reading people, um, one of the things that you'll learn from me is like when you get a reading, when you get some insight, always go with the first thing that comes to you. Now, when you've been programmed, right, whether it's from self-hypnosis or hypnosis from others, right, when you've been programmed to second guess, doubt, is that real, right? As opposed to just saying to yourself, I'm just going to go with the first thing that comes to me, whether I know it's right or wrong, I'm just going to go with it. What ends up happening is the more times you do that, right? And then let's say you're working with other people, you're giving a reading to people. When you start getting the feedback, like, well, people are like, oh my God, how did you know that? Or, oh my gosh, you're right on, spot on. It's not that you're trying to be spot on, okay? It's more that when you trust the messages that are coming through, because it's just learning how to trust, then you just naturally, all right, get even more in tune. So what I want you to invite, what, to, uh, what I want to invite you to consider is that you're already getting the messages. It's just like, catch yourself like, oh, I'm second guessing myself. Hold on. This is the first thing that came to me. So this is what I want to share with you now. Okay. You go with it. You always, always, always just want to go with that first thing that comes to you. 
Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Molly, uh, how do I work on seeing, feeling more than just broken auras? Yeah, you know what? That's a great question. Um, where I come from is if you want to get more than just broken auras, for example, check in with yourself with where like there's something vibrating in yourself um, where you could release, right? Where, where it's like, how can I put this? It's kind of like if you're wearing pink sunglasses, right? If you're wearing pink sunglasses, then how does the rest of the world look? It's just going to look pink, right? Whereas when you release and let go of those pink sunglasses, then you start to see, oh, wow, look, there's more color out there, more than just the pink. Okay. So I find that a lot of times when people are, are just tuned to, for example, um, I've had many students that are just tuned to like, oh, I sense when someone has a bad day, but I can't sense anything else. Well, consider that you're wearing bad day sunglasses, <laughs> for lack of a better way to say it, right? Whereas when you could take that those bad day sunglasses off and imagine what else you, get, you become open to. Okay, hopefully that makes sense, but um, that's the best way I could explain it for now. All right. Uh, Rolene, I'm not sure what the question is exactly. Does this resonate with Kundalini awakening? Um, well, let me just say that at least how I was taught with Kundalini, you actually need a physical body to, in order to experience Kundalini. Whereas say a being without a body, a spirit without a body, they don't experience Kundalini, right? So Kundalini awakening is very much of the physical body, right? It, and it is very much a spiritual thing. Um, but I want to say that a lot of the psychic stuff, this energy work can involve Kundalini and it also goes beyond the body, if that makes sense, okay? So yeah, Kundalini is very much its own thing, right? There's it's its its own kind of healing and awakening for sure. Um, and yet, right, there's there's even more beyond a kundalini. I hopefully that answers the question there. Um, let's see. Y'all are saying hi to my dog, Layla. Oh, so I'm, I'm like a little behind on the comments here. I'm Jervie's like a great class. Thank you. I'm Justin, lights are ramping in my room. I'm seeing translucent white outlines. Is that spirit? Yeah, it could be, right? A lot of times when I see spirit, I, it's, I just kind of see more of the outline of them. Um, and then, you know, when I kind of take a closer look and I could maybe make out a face, I could maybe make out it's male, female. Um, but a lot of times it's, you just kind of tap into your higher knowing in combination with just seeing. But yes, um, to answer your question, yeah, a lot of times I'll, I'll see them as outlines or, or like a silhouette when I see spirit. All right, uh, Monique, from a personal aspect, can you extend how you deprogram hypnosis? Uh, I'm not sure I'm getting the question exactly. Um, if I were to paraphrase your question, can you deprogram hypnosis? Absolutely, okay. And at least how I look at it, hypnosis is an energy. And when you relate to it all as energy, then you know, stuck energies, right? The opposite of something stuck is something in movement, right? So you can get stuck energies unstuck, okay? And there are healing techniques to heal from stuck hypnosis. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I hope I'm answering your question there, but um, uh, at least that's my understanding of your question there. Um, Jessica, my kids seem to be having the same nightmares I have been having all my life, but there are physical marks on my kids when they wake up. How can I protect them? Yeah, you know what, Jessica, you can, this whole notion of the bubble, right? Teach your kids about their own psychic boundaries, okay? And when I find that kids are actually easier to teach, right? When you teach, especially when you have fun with it and they're like, okay, a bubble, let me play with this bubble, right? Um, then... You know, that's, that's like the first step, establishing the psychic boundaries. Then the second part of it, and this is a little harder with kids, is that this whole thing that I keep talking about, like it's all energy, 
when you realize it's just all energy that there's nothing to be afraid of, right? When spirits that those particular beings get like, oh, they're not afraid. It's kind of like the bully in the schoolyard, right? The bully picks on you, but when you tell the bully, like, I'm not afraid of you, then the bully goes somewhere else. Okay. So there's a, you know, deeper healing work that's needed for that. That's not an easy solution. Um, but at least at the start, what you can work with is helping your kids understand, okay, here's your bubble. What's on the inside of your bubble is your world. What's on the outside, right? And then there's like that's the rest of the world and then the boundaries of your bubble. Just to say, hey, you're, you're only allowed to be on the outside of my bubble, All right? You just, it's like having rules. It's kind of like when, you know, like some households, like, oh, please take off your shoes before you come in. And of course, you're going to follow their rules, right? Because that's the rules. Same goes with the world of spirit. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see. Uh, sorry, guys, if I'm skipping over. And I, the comments came in. I got a little lost with where I'm at here. Um, okay. Um, some of you are still commenting on when I said shine brighter. Okay, so that's, that tells you how far behind I am. Um, okay, Lynn says, wow, that this is huge. It's not about being spot on. It's about trusting the message. This is why I keep coming back to Joe. He is really so insightful. <laughs> well, hey, Lynn, it's been a while. Great to see you. Great. Thanks for, your, for sharing that comment there. Um, Molly's like, so I have a block that needs releasing in order to take off my pink sunglasses. Yeah, it could be a block, right? Or it could be just part of the hypnosis. Like, we believe we have to look at it in this way, or this is all we can see, okay? And um, yeah, yeah, just, just play with that concept. And um, it'll make more sense, right, when you, when you, uh, It'll make more sense when you start to realize, it's like being tuned to seeing certain things, right? And it's like allowing yourself to be more open to, to that there's more. And I know I'm butchering that explanation, but <laughs> it's the best that I could do in the span of like uh, trying to respond in one minute here. Um, let me go to Zoom once again. Heather's asking, do you read any of the Seth books and what do you think of them? Um, I ha Have I? I think I've read something similar. It might've been Seth or who's the other famous one? Um, I, I forget, like off the top of my head. Um, here's the thing with all of that. This is my point of view and you may or may not agree with me. A lot of what is said or is channeled through by Seth or some of these other beings. What's so different between what Seth says and what your own inner wisdom says or tells you? Because I find that a lot of what Seth is saying, like when you meditate and, and meditate on your own deeper truths, then a lot of what Seth is saying is like stuff you could have come up with on your own, okay? And I'm not negating anything with Seth or invalidating at all um, because there's a lot of value to that. What I question is when people take everything that Seth says as gospel and it prevents people from really tuning into their own inner wisdom, their own inner self, their own answers what you want to get away from is like searching for answers out there. Does that make sense? So yes, I've read a couple, um, but after a while I'm like, well, I'm not learning anything new. Maybe it's like reaffirming or validating what I already know. Right. And I'm like, okay, well, thank you for sharing. And, you know, I just move on. <laughs> so again, I'm not saying anything bad about Seth or any of that. Right. Cause like I said, a lot of people get a lot of value, a lot of healing out of that. Uh, but I do encourage people to, to look within as well for your own answers there, okay? Uh, let's see. 
<laughs> Stacy. Um, I'm pretty sure I've seen two orbs come down and then go back up behind you. Oh, oh gee, this is so awesome. Feeling like I am opening up more and more each day. I come and listen and practice what you are teaching us. Awesome. I love that you're teaching. And guess what? You saw something, right? We, we tend to second guess like, oh, I didn't see anything. But literally, it's like, oh, I just saw two orbs behind you. <laughs> okay, so great. Thank you for sharing. Um, let me see. My wife walked, Jessica, my wife walked in on me floating in the air. I heard her come in. I seen everything around me, but I couldn't talk. Move or talk, please. Can you tell me what is what I was doing after I felt drained? And Sarah, please help. Yeah, Jessica, you might have had, if I'm understanding your um, comments correctly. Yeah, it seems like you had an out-of-body experience. You know, people do that. Like one of my teachers, um, Cody, he used to like to say that 50% of the people that get into this work, they're in their body. And 50% of the people that come into this work, they're out of the body. They'd rather be out of their body. They're floaty, right? Um, and then, you know, the 50% 50, 50 of people that want to be, that are in, more in the body, they don't like being out of the body. And so when people do have out-of-body experiences, right, um, a lot of times they will report like, oh my God, it was so beautiful up there. I saw everything. I was one with everything. I saw the light. I saw the tunnel. And then they come back into the body and it's like, uh, it was so much more peaceful out there. Right. So what ends up happening is like all that stuff that was out there, they're not able to embody it in here. OK, so I don't know if I'm answering your question or addressing your specific case, Jessica, but that's what happens a lot of times when people get all these ahas outside the body, but they haven't yet embodied it. Right. Hasn't come into the body. OK, so, yeah, um, I, you know, I've had people that come in for healings with me, like they did like ayahuasca, had all this great inside outside the body, right? They floated, they did what they did with ayahuasca, but they didn't bring it back into the body. So they had a great time in ayahuasca, but they come back to their life and they're like, oh, my life sucks, or how come things haven't changed? I thought it was supposed to be great. It's because they haven't brought the information back in, okay? All right, uh, let's see. Amy, do you have a technique for shutting down chakras except your third eye for readings? Empath here and I have a pain in my, in my orange and yellow chakra for a while. Okay, so Amy, that's a great question. Um, that is actually something I teach, not necessarily shutting down chakras, right? Um, but lowering them down, right? So that less energy flows through your lower chakras and when you could kind of lower down the lower chakras, naturally more energy is available for your upper chakras. Okay, so that's the idea. And yes, in the training, that's actually something, uh, what week, I'll teach that on maybe week three of the eight week program. I'll teach you exactly that, okay? Um, okay, let's see, Raleen. Oh, wait, I'm a lucid daydreamer. Okay, so that's more of a comment. Okay, Carmen, great question. How do you know who you are hearing speaking to, i.e. spirit guide, angels, other people? Yeah, you know, Carmen, it, um, the simple answer is it does take practice. Um, the more complicated answer is that one thing I teach in my level three of my training, the spirit communications mastery, um, is this idea that there's a language of spirit. And basically the idea is that you could hear spirit, you could see, um, and that spirit will tap into your higher knowing. So there's like three ways, and it could be one or the other or a combination of two or three, all of the above. And then there's also channeling, right? Um, just realize that some spirit are more adept at, say, showing you a picture. Some are more adept at communicating with you. Some are more adept at tapping into your higher knowing. So what's important to realize is sometimes it's less about your ability to like hear them or distinguish them. A lot of times it's also about the ability of that spirit to communicate in the first place, right? So you could actually do healing work on the spirit itself to help it communicate much better. Um, and this, is especially for people that have just passed away, they're in transition, 
um, there are ways to heal spirit as well, okay? And then after a while, the more you practice, because it does take practice, um, you start to distinguish like, oh yeah, that's an angelic energy or, oh, that's a familiar one. That's Archangel Michael, especially if you've worked with Archangel Michael before, right? Um, or what, I remember working with um, Archangel Shamuel. I'm like, whoa, that's a different energy. Okay, it was unlike any other energy that I worked before. And at first I wasn't sure, but you know, the more I'd said hello to Archangel Shamuel, I'm like, okay, I'm getting you. That's just your vibration. And it's not like I was trying to make it up either, right? That's that's yet another tip. Okay, it's more, it's more something I teach in my advanced training. You know something is more of a real psychic message for you because it's not like you're trying to make it up anyway. And it's not if and if it's not like you're actively trying to make it up anyway, then you go with it, right? You go with it. It's like it's no accident. Okay. All right. Um, probably I always see the shape of a face or shape like spirit. Is it imagination or real? Can you ex explain why I see that? Yeah. You know, I find that when anything repeats, whether it's 333, 777, like you get that all the time, right? Or for me, the street lights were turning off when I was younger. For many people, um, probably you're not the only one, like you keep seeing the same face all the time. When this happens, usually what's happening is that spirit is trying to get your attention, trying to deliver a message to you, okay? And you, it's your choice. You can get the message if you want. If you don't want to, same thing. Remember your body, your temple, right? Um, but I find that sometimes spirit really has an important message for you. And if they don't quite go away, then those are the times I pay attention. I don't pay attention to like every spirit that comes my way, right? Because there's like so many spirit, right? There's so many spirit that you can't handle all of them all at the same time. But I have a general rule, rule with the world of spirit. Like you only come in when I ask you to. And if it really is important, then, you know, we could set a time, right? Because it's when it's my time, not their time. It's my time. <laughs> but yeah, when you see um, spirit like that, right? Um, and it's, it's something, like I said, you're not trying to make it up, then yeah, it's more than just your imagination. Okay. So in those moments, then it, there's probably some kind of message waiting to be delivered to you. Uh, let's see. Lynn is saying, definitely needed to be here tonight. I have struggled with being in my body and in this world. I struggle to not spend all day with spirit meditating or channeling. I feel so much more at peace when I when I cross over than when I'm present in my day-to-day -day life. Yeah. And that's very common, right? And yet, Lynn, you still need to honor your body, okay? Because your body's your instrument, right? Without the body, then spirit, you as a spirit wouldn't be having these experiences, okay? So take care of your body. You still got to take care of your body. All right. Uh, going back to Zoom here. Nat, um, I understand low level negative energies and beings, but I have a question. There have been encountering more imposters, tricksters lately, doing my GCE clearing, anchoring, calling in spirit. What do you do to clear these energies? Yeah. Um, one thing that you're going to learn, right, um, especially if you were to sign up for my program, is I do a lot of crown chakra work, okay? And when it comes to your crown chakra, imagine your crown chakra as a spiritual doorway. What's on above your crown, right, just to give you the picture, what's above your crown is the world of spirit. What's below your crown chakra is your body, right? So when you can have control of, over your spiritual doorway or your crown chakra, then you choose what comes in and you choose what doesn't, right? So it's less about like, how do you get rid of them, right? And all that. It's more like, what do you choose to attract or not? What do you choose to let in or not? Okay. And yes, if energies spirit do get in your space yeah you can clear them and you know there, there are ways to release all that um and that's something that's i don't you know in, in the time that we have it'd be hard to teach all that now but yes there are ways one thing you can do is you can actually at least ground a lot of the negative energies that get in your space 
because if there's a negative energy and then there's a being that vibrates at that same energy, if you could let go of this energy, then when the being comes around, they're like, oh, there's nothing here anymore. Right? Does that make sense? And then they go somewhere else. They float off. They don't, there's nothing to attach to anymore. Okay. So that's one thing you can work on. Like watch those things that they attach to. <laughs> okay. So this is how far I am, like the whole brighter thing. Um, let's see. Okay. Here's a great question. Sally, um, how do we know the difference between information from spirit and our imagination? Yeah. So when you're actively, this is a great question, by the way, um, when you actively, when you actively are trying to imagine something. So say, for example, you're like at work and you're brainstorming all these ideas, right? You notice there's like a level of effort to that. Okay. Whereas when something comes to you, kind of like when a, an idea comes to you out of nowhere and you're like, oh, where did that come from? That's the difference. Okay. One is you're actively trying to make something up. The other side of it all is like, it just comes to you like it's like deja vu or that idea that comes out, out of nowhere. That's how you can tell the difference, okay? So I find that when it really is from spirit, it's that stuff that I'm not making up comes out of nowhere, okay? All right, uh, let's see. Um, Kelly, what about seeing black blobs? My 15-year-old and I both see them, okay? Well, first of all, just have that attitude. Oh, it's just energy, okay? And then when you see the black blobs, right? Always, always, always go with the first thing that comes to you. Like when you intuitively or telepathically ask yourself like, oh, what is that? And then like you say, okay, the black blobs are... And then you kind of just fill in the blank, right? With whatever comes forward, okay? And, you know, like I said, energy is not necessarily bad all the time, right? Um, and if you, like I mentioned to Prelly, if you keep seeing the same thing over and over again, then maybe there's some kind of message there, okay? So uh, let's see. Just because sometimes I see shadows, sometimes I see outlines, okay? Oh, this is where about how I've seen spirit. Um, let's see, Heather. Okay. Oh, it was just more of a question. Okay. It looks like these are more comments. Okay. Done with there. Done with there. Okay. One more question from Facebook, or maybe it looks like more just a comment. I hear there, the spirits, voices, they guide me much better than I do. I was research after, and then it makes so much sense when I, once I understand why they told me what to do like aromatherapy in my family. Some of us dream of what the future will be. Myself, my dad, my daughter all see parts of the future, tap into people we love very easily, take on their pain, learning to let their pain, I gather, go. Okay, oh, I think that was just more of a comment. All right, uh, let's see. And last but not least, and my apologies, I didn't read every single comment. I was just looking for more questions. Um, Carmen says, right on. Thank you for the answer, Joe. This is great to know that we can heal spirit and that some are better with pictures, communication, et cetera. So cool. And Kelly says, thank you. I know they are spirit since I've been more open and realizing just because they are black doesn't mean they are bad. Yes, great realization, okay? All right, you guys. Well, um, that's all the questions I see coming in. So again, just a reminder, tomorrow we're actually gonna get into the third eye. So. Um, looking at, you know, dispelling a little bit more myths about the third eye and then actually um, getting a sense of what it is, what it's like to really look and see through the third eye, okay? And then as well, I'm going to do a real quick demo. I'm going to read up to three people. So um, whether you're watching live or the replay, remember to type in hashtag day three done. But otherwise, it was great hanging out with you. Thank you for hanging out. It was fun. I loved all the energy, you guys all the questions, the comments, the interaction, and the community. All right, so that's all I have for today. All right, be well, take care of yourself, stay grounded, replenish with lots of gold, practice all that, and I will see you all tomorrow. All right, so hashtag day three done. <laughs> all right, bye, you guys.